Crystal with Simple Studies. I'm here sharing the third video of what we will be using in our 2023-24 school year here in our home school. My son is going to be eighth grade and my daughter is going to be roughly third, fourth grade. Um, first, make sure you pick up the Form 2 guide. I will be releasing form guides every single month, May through August. They're free to download for members. And <clears throat> okay, so this being the third video, today I'm covering science, nature lore, nature study, morning circle picks, common subjects, um, Shakespeare, our community classes, and a ton more supplemental read alouds. If you watch the first two videos, we are obviously in the medieval middle ages period. I have a new simple study coming out at the end of May that goes along with When Nights Were Bold um, by Eva March Tappan. Sorry, <laughs> I have to remember her name. Okay, so let's get started. The first video I covered Bible math, history, read alouds, Plutarch geography, biographies and tales. The second video I covered main literature picks, writing, copywork, dictation, grammar, citizenship and government, foreign language, poetry, and a few more picture books. And then here we go. Okay, so for science, I'm so excited about what we're doing for science, you guys. When I say science, especially for the younger ages, it really, I feel nature study really sets our children up to um, enjoy formal science in their later years. The art of observation and questioning and wonder. So, I mean, that's kind of why I created Simple Studies in the first place was that for children to enjoy their nature studies. But moving on, um, we, and we've done all of the simple studies, obviously. Um, we are going to, so for my third, fourth grader, she is obsessed with animals. She's obsessed with nature. Yay, I'm so happy about that. God's creation, right? So naturally, she's going to be moving into more of like a daily science um, formal lesson. And we chose exploring what God has made. And this is a, a Simply Charlotte Mason program. I'm really excited about it. it. It brings in this book, Pagu, which if you've never read the Hauling Sea Hauling books, they are amazing. I know that Beautiful Feet Books uses them as well. Um, <clears throat> so this one does have a breakdown of, I want to say, a lesson every single day for the most part, but it goes into physical science. So you're looking at things like, and you can get a lot of the books at... Um, your library, and I'm going to show a few of them to you guys today, but you're going to go into everything. I'll just hold it up because I feel like it's a lot to read off, but everything from earth science to physical science to botany, um, biology, weather, light, but it follows the seven days of creation. So that's what we're going to be doing. I don't know if you can see all of that, but it's a lot of wonderful lessons and you're really, the main focus is you're reading from living science books. So I'm going to show you a few of them. Obviously our favorite, I'm going to, I'm going to just put a plug in here for this one. This is our favorite, absolute favorite re resource for everything uh, natural history. Um, the pictures in here are just, that's a gross one. Um, they're, they're massive and huge and beautiful and they have a ton of different species and you can just open this up and go um, in terms of like nature study drawing. But back to the science, days of creation. Um, these are some of the books that I've collected. This is not all of them. I think this is for the first, uh, probably, I don't know, at least the first 15 lessons, maybe, maybe not that many. Um, so if I couldn't get it from the library, I did find it online. I'm not going to list these below only because it goes along with that guide by Simply Charlotte Mason. Um, like the, I think this one's from the library. So I, if I, I probably won't still have this in the book. I'll have to get it back from the library again. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the books that are in that guide. <clears throat> I feel like that's helpful sometimes instead of just showing you a guide where you're going to need a ton of books. Sometimes looking at what you are going to be reading. Okay, and then for kind of our nature lore, nature study, um, I have these two for my daughter. And, um, 
Oh gosh, I thought there was another one. Um, I put away a book actually that is going to be in my video for for uh, members only, and it's it's a great book as well. Um, I did not pick up Forest Neighbors. She has a ton of them. There's Forest Neighbors, um, Desert and Prairie, Outdoor Visits, and Hunting Through the Four Se Through Four Seasons was one of our favorite ones that is uh, by Edith Patch. So let's see. And anyway, I guess what I'm saying is that we'll be reading through these. I'm considering making a simple studies guide for desert neighbors. If that would be helpful to you, will you please let me know? And if um, nobody says anything, <laughs> then I might just still make it for myself. Okay. Science for our form three eighth grader looks like, <sighs> okay, this, this is a, I have a little bit of a, a thing here. So he's been working through general science with Apologia. The next one on the list would be physical science by Apologia because that's recommended for eighth graders. Um, he's over halfway done with this one. So I'm actually just gonna be continuing it in eighth grade. The next book, physical science, has horrible reviews. I, from everything I read, for the most part, it did not seem like it was going to be nearly as enjoyable or thorough. I mean, I guess it's very thorough, but I was not too excited about some of the reviews for the Apology of, Apology of Physical Science. The general science has been great. So we're gonna continue with this. If we're ready to move to something else next year for science, it will most likely be Science in the Atomic Age, I think by while. Um, and I will link that below just for those of you who do have some older students who are looking for something outside of this one. Um, but I mean, I kind of feel like it's a letdown when you're excited about, I, I, I think Apologia does wonderful. They have, mo most of their things are very wonderful, but the physical science, I'm just really kind of bummed because I just assumed we would move into physical science, but we're not going to. Um, okay. So another thing I picked up is uh, Nature's Beautiful Order by Memoria Press. Don't know how it's going to go yet. We're not big on like fill in the blank stuff. And I kind of feel like that's a little bit in this one. I mean, it's nature, but also it's, it's very, it's pretty thorough and it really does get into the specifics of the biology nature behind animals and the study of animals. And what I love about this is, and I, I feel like I shared this in a, a video a while ago, it is taken from classical naturalists. They wrote this based on classical naturalists who were passionate about being in nature and studying nature. Okay, so let's see. We have, <clears throat> I'll do a couple, okay. <sighs> so our morning circle, I've covered a lot of those in the first few videos, first two videos. Um, I did pick up, well, I actually already had this. I I, we did not study it though. I did pick it up a few years ago and we did not use it. I do use the Simply Charlotte Mason picture study guides, portfolios. This is Giotto. And I'm focusing on the medieval period times, but not a lot of artists are featured. I mean, Dürer, is that how you say, is that how you say his name? Um, there are a few, obviously you have Michelangelo, you have Leonardo da Vinci. Um, I think Raphael falls in that category. There are several of them, but we've studied a lot of them and I don't want to just keep studying the same people. So there are some um, modern artists who painted, <clears throat> excuse me, painted scenes from the middle ages we might be going into those. And if I do, I actually really like A Humble Place. I love her picture studies. They are beautiful. She does a wonderful job with the biographies. So I highly recommend that for picture study. And I'm going to be honest and say that for our composer study, we are going to be using Ambleside Online and their guidance. So
I will say that for the younger years, we really enjoyed growing garden side. She does a beautiful job tying in for younger children, um, movement and the study of um, composers, and then you use bells. And if you've followed like simple studies for a long enough time, you guys will know that that was something that we really enjoyed. So anyway, I am going to go into a little bit of our, let's see, let's do Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Okay, so Shakespeare, we will still be reading through. These are our New West Press um, versions of Tales from Shakespeare and Beautiful Stories from Shakespeare. So we will still be reading through those. Um, our Archangel uh, audiobooks are perfect for Shakespeare. And then obviously we have some biographies and and some more picture books to enjoy Shakespeare uh, in a wider range. I have some open reading suggestions I was gonna throw into this video so you guys could kind of see what, um, like for my Form 3 student, I'm throwing in a few middle grade options just to shake things up a little bit. It, they won't be assigned, they will be available. So we like to, it, when he finishes a book and he tells me he's finished a book, that maybe wasn't assigned or was assigned, we like to go have lunch or dinner and talk about the book. It's not a prerequisite to go hang out with mom, but it's kind of a fun little cherry on top after finishing a book. So these extra few books are more just gonna be hanging out in the house that he will um, be available to read. And same with my daughter. Um, I want to say that I have three extra books for Morning Circle I was gonna share with you, but for, yeah, okay. So for form three, I have The Westing Game, Book of Three, King of Shadows, which I hear that the, uh, the Dark is Rising books are by Susan Cooper are actually really good as well. I just haven't been able to pick them up. And things like this, you know, What Was the Plague? I just trying to keep some fun books on hand. Some other supplements I have, A Long Walk to Water. I'd really like to get to this book with the kids. It, it looks so short and everybody highly recommends it. And then I have like the Book of Kells, um, which will be fun too. But let's see. Okay, so the three extra Morning Circle read alouds, if we, <laughs> if we get a chance to read them or if on a whim, I'm like, hey, let's read this. Okay, so... Um, this one by Brimwood Press, we read Secret of the Scribe, if you guys saw any of my past videos. This is the medieval one. This is the medieval, the second book, but it's a medieval one. These books are so sweet. Let me see if I can find... <sighs> this one doesn't have as many um, images, but I, we, we all really enjoyed Secret of the Scribe. This one does not necessarily have a guide that goes with it like the Secret of the Scribe did, but... Um, I feel like they're really well written. And then The Bronze Bow, which is actually an ancient history fiction, I believe. And Chaucer, Chaucer stories, simply told. If you have simply in the, in the title of your book, then I am excited because no way could you get through all of the main heavy books with your children. The goal is to expose them. So later on in life, they're like, ah, there's like a little bell that goes off. And I remember that, or even just a portion of that. The idea is to expose them. Okay, I said I would go into some community classes that we're, the kids are doing. I have not full, fully solidified and decided what they will be taking. However, I have mentioned our son is going to be taking a Plutarch online class by Thomas Banks. And he and his wife, Angelina Stratford, run the Literary Life, Literary Life podcast with Cindy Rollins. And I love their podcast. I've spent a couple years listening to it. I really trust that they know their stuff. So I'm really excited for Thomas Banks to teach my child. <laughs> Pluto. Um, we have living art lessons, possibly hands-on she will be taking these things hands-on science and then my nature study class possibly Spanish I would love to introduce her into Spanish I don't know um, if we'll be doing that and then our form three eighth grader will be taking things like apologetics 
Lost Tools for Writing, which you guys saw the, the curriculum in the last video, in video two. He'll be doing journaling with it through the Middle Ages with me. So that being said, those are a few of the community classes for fall, at least, that our kids might be taking. Not too much. It's only one day a week. Um, the rest of the week, our, uh, I think we have, um, our daughter is going to be doing an outdoor survival once an afternoon, once a week, and whatever. One afternoon a week. <laughs> Because when we lived in Oregon, our son grew up doing that as well. I feel like being outdoors in nature, immersed is important. So for my uh, journaling through middle ages class that I'm teaching, I have a few um, resources that if you guys are uh, interested in, I will be diving a little bit more into this, into when nights were bold in the simple studies, middle ages, sorry. Um, some of these are going to be recommended. So heraldry is going to be a huge thing that we work on. And some of these books are, I've had them since last year because I've really wanted to get into heraldry, um, the coat of arms and shields and crests and letting our children design those. Um, I think that's really important. And then this is just for me as an educator, medieval literacy. Uh, a copendium of medieval medieval knowledge with the guidance of C.S. Lewis. If anybody knows anything about C.S. Lewis, that was his favorite um, historical period. Okay, a couple more. Not a couple more. I have a list, a stack of some just extra resource books we will be using. So I'll just kind of lift them up. This is Warfare. This is a DK. Oh, yeah, DK Smithsonian. And it goes into warfare, like weaponry and things like that. A few other things that I've picked up so that you guys can see them. Just keep in mind, I love researching books. I love living books. Um, this one's very highly recommended. Um, so again, don't feel like you need to go get all of these or buy all of these or even go to the library and get all of them. These are just, there, there are plenty of amazing, wonderful books out there. I just, um, we used this when the kids were little and I was like, I want to bring that back out. It's such a great little book. Um, and then Robin Hood. These are actually in my Heroes of Hope. If you guys have never tried Heroes of Hope, Heroes and Hope, Simple Study, that is still one of our absolute favorites and it goes through heroes throughout time. Um, and has, that one has a ton of books that if you're interested in. Um, this is like if a newspaper was... Um, published during that time, during the plague. Time Traveler. And then this is an uh, an extra like Friday afternoon. We're in the middle of like, oh, we're done with the formal lessons. I will break this out and the kids can enjoy that. I love the draw and write books. And then the Esborn Medieval World. So I think Oh, I have one more. I have one more thing to show you. My planner for next year. Okay. So this last year I used it. I was in Barnes and Noble and I saw this teacher planner and it was laid out with like five different blank grids and you got to write in the weeks and it was so simple and easy and it was sweet and colorful and cute. And um, so I used that this year. It just happened that I used that and then I used uh, my moleskin as usual for like log my log book and stuff. But I <laughs> I ordered this planner last year from my friend, Anna Vance, and it came and I was already like a month or two into my other planner and I felt so bad because she's amazing. Um, so this year I'm going to be using it and I actually, you, you get to pick your cover, you get to pick the insides. I'm very simple, so I literally have like annual, weekly plans. Everything's blank right now because I haven't even started it because it's for next year. And then I've got notes, but she, you know, you have like little encouragement quotes and whatnot, but this is what I will be using for our next year. What I love about this is again, you get to decide the grids. So this is kind of what a layout looks like for one week. And I needed more space because we have a lot of books. So like week of, and then I can have like our morning circle. I usually list my son in the first two, and then my daughter, 
And then anything that I have or things like field trips or um, baseball games or anything out of um, like appointments and stuff go at the bottom. But I love the blank style all the way through. And <clears throat> I will probably create a space for notes. But again, I designed this like a year ago and um, it's great. So anyway, I can say here, I'm like sitting here looking through all my things while you're sitting there waiting for me to end this video. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope some of this was helpful for you in planning your year. And I just am so excited. And I'm excited to read a ton of these books that were listed in the first and second in this video. Keep in mind, my members get to watch uh, an extra private video of like another whole stack of books that we just won't be able to get to, but will be perfect for other families. And they will be able to download the form guide for free each month. And there are a ton of other membership benefits. That being said, I hope this was helpful. Really excited. And I will see you guys all in the next video. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your spring. Thanks for watching.